I wanted to work through another example problem with you. So again, with these equations, we're looking at just rewriting them. We're solving them for z so that uh, it will make it a lot easier for us if we just need to plug in some other values. If we know x already, we can just plug it in and we can identify z really, really quickly without trying to really solve it is the goal. Okay, so let's walk through how to do this. And we're gonna use the same principles with this that we use with our normal equations that we solve. Okay, we're gonna solve it just like a traditional one. The only difference here is that we're trying to get z all by itself. And I have an x thrown in there too. Okay, so let's look at this. So I've got my z right here. The problem with my z is it's not all by itself right now. So I need to get it so that it's all by itself. And I've got this, um, these, this parenthesis here, and I've got this two on the outside. So I just kind of need to simplify everything first. So the first thing I'm gonna do is distribute that two to everything inside of that parenthesis. That means to the z and to the negative three x. Okay, so I'm gonna do that first just to kind of simplify things. Okay, now we've got that two z minus six x, okay. All right, now what I need to do is just get z all by itself. So I need to get rid of everything else. So anything that's on that side of the equation, on this left side here, I'm gonna to try to get rid of it and move it over to the right side. So this six, negative six x, I need to get rid of that. So to cancel that out, what's the opposite of negative six x would be a positive six x. So I'm going to add six x to both sides. Okay, so then that'll cancel out here on the left-hand side, negative six x plus six x is gonna give me zero. That's just gonna leave me a two Z over here. On my right side, I've got negative five X plus six X, which would leave me a plain old X. So we'll do that now. Okay, now I've almost got Z all by itself. I've got one more thing I need to do. I need to get rid of that two. And this is a two times X. So in order, if it's a two times X, the opposite of times multiplication is division. So the opposite of multiplication is division. I'm gonna divide both sides by two. And when I divide both sides by two, here's the catch. Um, let's look at this. Two Z divided by two is just one Z, which is Z. That's what I'm looking for, so done. But the catch here is that I have to divide the entire right-hand side here by two. Not just this X, but I need to do it to the X and the 14. So you notice I kind of did it like this. And then just to break it apart just a little bit further, these two are equivalent expressions. They're the same here, X plus 14 divided by two, or x divided by two plus 14 divided by two, those are equivalent. But just to illustrate that this two, we're gonna divide that entire side by two. Okay, so um, 14 divided by two, that's an easy one, that's seven. Uh, x divided by two, okay, I can write it x divided by two, that's completely legit legitimate, that will work. Well, remember that the number in front of x is really a one, so it's really one x divided by two. So I could write it like that, how you'll typically see it though is written like this, one half x plus seven. And this x divided by two and one half x are equivalent. They are the same. They're just two ways of writing it. And on your homework, and this is a multiple choice, I will write it in this fashion here, one half x. Just understand that those two are the same. So hopefully you found this video to be helpful.